In this lesson, we're going to create the surface detail for our remote. All right, so in this lesson, I wanted to show you just a couple of tools that we have available to us uh, in the graphite modeling tools. Uh, some of these are really, really neat uh, to work with, and they uh, really have special uses and can be really helpful in certain situations. So to get started with this, I'm going to select my remote. And we're going to make sure that we have our graphite modeling tools on. And let's go to Edible Poly. And in here, under the ribbon, you can see that we have Modeling, Freeform, Selection, Object Paint, and Populate. Now, what we're worried about in this particular part is Modeling and Freeform. And right now, I'm going to switch over to the Freeform um, portion of the ribbon. And I'm going to go to PolyDraw. Now, here you can see that we have a list of tools that we can use uh, for modeling. And a lot of these are going to be um, helpful for creating geometry from existing objects. So what I want to do is I want to be able to draw right on the surface of my object. So under this, we're going to go to Poly Draw, and then I'm going to tell it what to draw on. Right now it's set to Grid, but I want to set this to um, the particular selection. So right now that's set to Selection. I can go to Topology. And here I can actually draw right on the surface of this model. So if I go to my front view, I'm going to go ahead and create or just draw, left click and hold, and draw a circle around this particular object. Now I'm going to draw another circle on the inside of that. And we don't have to be too particularly careful. We're just trying to get some, some base topology here. And then from here, I can left click and drag these little lines to go through that. And you'll see that it starts to create geometry across um, what I've drawn. So here, left click and hold and draw, you can see that it's created that topology. Now if I right click, that's going to end that process. And then what I'm left with is this topology. Now, if I go to element mode, I can select that, uh, those polygons that I just had there. And I can move them out away from that object there. And here you can see that that's been created. So nice and neat, it has that turbo smooth applied to it. Um, now what I can do is I can come in and go to vertex mode and make my adjustments uh, that way. Now, with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I want to show you uh, one quick way uh, that makes this a little bit easier. So doing the exact same thing, we're going to go to our poly draw and topology, but I'm going to click on this arrow here and it, you notice how it says auto weld. I'm going to turn this feature off because now what it will do is it will allow me to draw on the surface without making it part of the object like we saw in just a moment ago. So let's go to poly, or Edible Poly, Freeform, Poly Draw, and Topology. So if I zoom out here, I can go ahead and I'm going to draw the inner circle first this time. So I'm just going to left click and draw that out. Okay, and I'm just using a mouse here. And then I'm going to left click and hold the outer circle draw that out and then we're going to left click and drag those lines through that topology notice it'll just create those polygons okay now if it looks like some are hidden and some aren't showing up um, you may have a little bit of an issue or it may just be cutting through that surface so we can right click to end that and you'll see that we have all of our topology and now we can just make some adjustments uh, to all of this. So we can come in and make our adjustments to the vertices, straighten things up, kind of get the right thickness that we're looking for. Okay, and everything looks great here. Okay, so make your adjustments. And then finally, what I want to do is I want to select these two edges, and I'm going to bridge those. And I'm going to do two segments and hit OK. Let's take this segment right here, pull that up, and then let's take all of these vertices and let's get these really close to the edge of our control knob there. Okay, so looking good. Yeah, let's make sure that we get all of these here. And then we're going to try to space that out for the rest of these. Now we don't have to be absolutely exact. We want to try and get them spaced out as close as possible. But we should be pretty good here. All right, so now that I have that thickness, um, I'm just showing you a, a different way of modeling objects. This can be really helpful if you're creating uh, something like a t-shirt for a character uh, that's already been modeled. 
uh, or something like that. Now notice that the move tool is way down here. Let's go ahead and go to our hierarchy panel, effect pivot only, and center it to that particular object. Now I'm going to move that away uh, just a little bit and then let's create uh, the rest of our geometry. So I'm going to go to edit uh, poly. Let's select the edges along the middle here and I'm going to create a segment across the middle and add two segments. Hit OK and then let's go to polygon mode and select those polygons on the inside here. I'm going to pull those out just to kind of create this lip for this particular object and then we'll push that back in just so it's inside of that remote just like so. Alright so now that I have this um, I want to create some more surface detail for my object. So I'm going to select that border on the outside there and I'm going to pull that just above the remote there. I know we just pushed that in but I want to be able to see this as I'm working. Uh, so with this we've seen that we've had the ability to select edges and we can extrude those out and I just want to show you that you have that same ability under your poly draw to use what's called extend. Now this uh, works pretty much the same way so we'll hold down alt and then we'll drag this out but notice that it's creating just a polygon in a quad uh, based on what we have right here. Um, I want to pull it out just from this edge so I'm going to hold down alt and shift and drag that out. So we've seen this before just by selecting an edge and moving it holding down shift and pulling that out. Now watch what I do here. If I hold down alt and left click and drag this edge notice how I can just take that all the way around um, like so. So a very very neat tool uh, that we can use to create topology. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit Control Z a couple of times and you can come in and create any design that you want out of this particular object. So I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, pull this up here, and then uh, let's go to vertex mode and just kind of shape this however we want to. Okay, so I've created just kind of a, a neat little shape here. And again, under Poly Draw, I can use Extend and use you know any functionality that I want for this particular object. Okay, so now that we have built that surface geometry, we want to go ahead and mirror that over. So I'm going to use Mirror, and we're going to make that a copy in the Y, and then I'm just going to pull that over. And it looks like I may have mirrored that in the wrong direction, and I did. So let's mirror that again. Let's do the Z direction, I believe, or even the, let's try the Z direction. And we'll pull that across. And again, still uh, the wrong way. Maybe I should have uh, hit wireframe to be able to see that. Sometimes it happens. So let's select our object. Let's use mirror. And let's use the X direction. There we go. Now let's pull that out. And there we go. So we're going to put it around this side as well. Now let's use Turbo Smooth to smooth that out. And there we go. Let's do this for both of them. And there we go. So now you can make any changes that you need to. Um, you could even attach the two objects together. So um, instead of applying Turbo Smooth to each one, just attach one to the other and then apply Turbo Smooth. Might make things just a little bit easier. And there we go. So now I'm going to go to border mode on this. Let's show end result and I'm going to select this border and hold control and select this border and let's hold shift and drag that down so we can create um, an edge here. So, And I had edge mode, not border mode. Hold shift, drag that out. And then we've got our surface detail uh, that we've created here. So one final thing, I want to create a switch uh, for my controller. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this polygon and I'm going to inset that. And let me find my inset tool. It looks like I moved that by accident. So there's cut. And it looks like our menu got taken all the way down to the bottom. Sometimes that happens. And we'll inset that amount a little bit. And then we'll extrude that down. 
and then I'll use Swift Loop under Modeling and Edit. Just kind of harden that up there. There we go. So now I can create just a box. It's going to go on the inside of that. So in our front view, let's turn off Auto Grid and hit F3, drag that cube out there. Put that into position. Now I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And I'm also going to put that right inside the remote slot. So I'm going to scale this down in my Y and then my X and Y here. And let's make that smaller in this direction. Actually rotate that 90 degrees. It looks a little bit better that way. Okay. So here we've got our switch. And there we go. So now we have something in there that's kind of acting as a switch here. All right, so now that we have all of these pieces together, all we need to do now is take our antenna from this, and we're going to just simply um, hit Control V to make a copy of that. And let's move this into position for our remote. And I'm going to go to my top view, just to make this a little bit easier to position. And then we'll scale that up in all three directions just to make that a little more apparent for the remote itself. Put that down in there. And there we go. So we have now finished the remote of our object. We can change its colors. We're all ready to go here. And now the final thing that we want to do in our next lesson is we want to go through the process of organizing your scene file. So that way whenever you're ready to pass it on through the um, pass it on through the pipeline, it's going to be ready to go and it won't be passed back to you. So we're going to talk about that next.